What is up everybody? My name is Lachlan and this is my booktube. Today's video is going to be a book review on Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This will be spoiler free. I do have a spoiler filled reading vlog coming. It's just I have four hours of footage and it's going to take me some time so that video will probably be posted about two days after this one. Anyway let's talk about this book. I have both editions as you can see. Well there are more than two editions but I have the Waterstone edition as well as the Barnes and Noble edition. For this video I'm not going to hold both of them up but I am going to hold my favorite version which is the Waterstones edition. That's what it looks like. The spine. And then here is the Barnes & Noble edition and that sticker is removable so I will remove it. I just got it in the mail not even an hour ago. And that's the spine of the Barnes & Noble edition. After this review, I'll go more in depth into like the art inside of these. Just for a quick look at what they look like. There you go. So let's talk about this book because it is no exaggeration when I say it turned out to be probably my favorite read of all time. And before I get started on my thoughts, I'm going to just read the synopsis because I think it does a great job and then I'll kind of recap a little bit of what the synopsis leaves out. That is not a spoiler. This will not include spoilers. From holy cup comes holy light. The faithful hand sets the world aright. And in the seven martyrs sight, mere man shall end this endless night. It has been 27 long years since the last sunrise. For nearly three decades, vampires have waged war against humanity, building their eternal empire as they tear down our own. Now only a few tiny sparks of light and dirt in a sea of darkness. Gabriel de Leon is a silver saint, a member of the Holy Brotherhood dedicated to defending the realm and church from the creatures of the night. But even the silver order couldn't stem the tide once daylight failed us, and now only Gabriel remains. Imprisoned by the very monsters he vowed to destroy, the silver saint is forced to tell his story. A story of legendary battles and forbidden love, of faith lost and friendships won, of the wars of the blood and the forever king and the quest for humanity's last remaining hope, the Holy Grail. Essentially, this book follows Gabriel de Leon on, who is a vampire and ends up being imprisoned for a murder and while imprisoned he is interviewed by another vampire named Jean-Francois and the story is told through Gabriel. This book is an interview with a vampire. So throughout this book Gabriel tells Jean-Francois all the atrocities that he has seen as well as his journey of his faith and his loss of faith in God. So if you haven't read Jay Kristoff before, he has a very specific writing style that I personally have fallen in love with. I've read his Nevernight trilogy and it is one of my all-time favorite series ever. It is an adult fantasy but it does have definitely young adult tones to it. Young adult readers will definitely enjoy it. But as far as this book, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this to fans of young adult fantasy unless you have read Nevernight. If you've read Nevernight and you love that, then you'll likely love this too. Just know going in that it's not young adult, it's definitely an adult fantasy. So as I was saying, Jay Kristoff has a very flashy, artistic, flowery writing style and not everyone loves it, but I personally do. If you are a fan of a dark fantasy or a fan of Jay Kristoff in general, if you're a fan of Bram Stoker's Dracula or Anne Rice's Interview with the Vampire, or if you read the Nevernight trilogy and you loved it, you'll likely love this. It's extremely gothic and it's also written by one of the most goth authors that I know of. So what did I like about it? Well, I loved everything about it. The prose, the writing, the world building, the gothic atmospheric vibes. I also love the characters, the scenery. But the main thing I loved about this book, besides the gothic tones, was the banter. The banter in this book is 15 out of 10, so good. Jay Kristoff killed it with this. If you think the banter in Nevernight is good, just you freaking wait. Because you're going to be shitting your pants with how funny this book is. As far as what I disliked, <laughs> that's honestly a very difficult question because there wasn't much I disliked. But it is worth saying that the first like 50 or so pages I really had to get used to because everything is in quotations. So Gabe is being interviewed by Jean-Francois and the whole interview is in quotations. And I think the reason that Jay Kristoff did it like that is because Jean-Francois will, will interrupt him at times. I think it was an important aspect of the book just because it made it so unique but also so enjoyable because Jean-Francois was pretty funny in my opinion. So he would like interrupt him sometimes and be like, your ding dong. So yeah, the quotations just took me a minute to get used to just because it was a little bit confusing. Whenever you start it, you'll kind of 
see what I'm talking about, but you do get used to it. Within the first 50 or so pages, I started to like really get used to seeing those quotations and it didn't bother me after that. Yeah, the banter between Jean-Francois and Gabe was just 15 out of 10. The banter between Gabe and pretty much everybody, every other character in this book is 15 out of 10. So good. I cannot emphasize that enough. It's just overall a freaking epic story. When I finished this, I was actually very depressed. I don't say that lightly. I was, I get very attached to thick books. Well, you can see where I started tabbing when I got my physical copy. And that's just because I did have the sampler arc, which wasn't the whole book. It was like, I only read like the first 300 pages with the sampler arc. And then I had a credit for Kindle. So then I did get the Kindle edition, which I didn't want to do, but my physical copy hadn't gotten in the mail. So as soon as I got my physical copy, obviously I read it and I tabbed it and I do plan on rereading this. If I'm being honest, I kind of already want to reread it. It's that good. It's epic. Another thing I really loved about this was the medieval vibes about it. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just so good, you guys. This is probably the most excited I've ever been about a book in my entire life. If you know me, you know my favorite series is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. It just really meant something to me whenever I read that series and it's an amazing series and I know not everyone's a fan, fan of Sarah J Maas and that's okay but Throne of Glass is I have that's like my favorite. Well step aside Sarah because Jay Kristoff has taken the cake with my new favorite read of free, pretty much all time. I am so excited for the next one. I don't know when it's gonna be. It's probably gonna be like two years from now, but it's fine. I'll just reread this a million times until then. So with all of that said, I will show you guys some of the artwork that is in the, this is the Barnes and Noble special edition. Okay, no, I'm holding the Waterstones. Let me get my head on straight. Let me pick up the Barnes and Noble edition. This is the Barnes and Noble edition, and this is what the artwork looks on the inside. This is Gabe, and this is Dior. This is just beautiful. This is also a signed copy, which I'm really excited about because my other books by Jake Christoph are not signed. And I'll show you just a couple of, so this is what the map looks like. And I will not be actually reading this copy. I'll be using my Waterstones edition as the one that I read and because I do highlight in my books. I'm not going to show you all of the artwork that's in here because some of it is spoilers, but here's one that's in the beginning of the book. It's just, they're really, really cool and they're not, there's probably, gosh, I don't even know. There's like maybe like 20 of these images, maybe more. I, honestly, I can't think about how many there are. There, there actually might be a lot more than that. I've been anticipating this book for such a long time. I had no idea that I would love it this much. It was a five star prediction for sure, but not at this level. If you're anything like me and you get attached to your thick books, definitely be prepared to just kind of be a little bit uh, sad after you finish it because it's such an amazing read and it also deals with uh, the topic of religion. It's just, <clears throat> there is a chapter called Sunshine and Pouring Rain. In that chapter, there is a character which I don't want to name because it's a slight spoiler. And this person talks to Gabe about religion and they're both battling each other, not battling, but they're both kind of having a discussion about religion and about God. I just found their conversation to be really, really impactful and meaningful and just such a good, it's just such a good book, you guys. There is so much in here to unpack. And I do my reading vlog, I do pretty much go in depth into like what happens and like my reactions. So if you're wanting to know my reactions or if you're wanting spoilers just in general, definitely check that out. I'll have it linked below when it's ready. Empire of the Vampire, guys. So good. I'm just so happy to have this book and I'm so excited for it even though i already read it i'm just still so excited for it so let me know below if you've read this book if you made it this far you can leave a blood emoji because there is quite a bit of blood in this book it is very epic as i said so there are a lot a lot of fighting scenes and just action in general 15 out of 10 all-time favorite book so good thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to like subscribe and comment below and i'll see you guys later with my next video which will likely be my empire of the vampire reading vlog thanks guys see you later